everybody. Merry Christmas Eve to all of you. It's so great that you guys are with us. If you are new and you are visiting with us, while I don't have a bulletin to share with you right now, we have a connections card on the back of the bulletin. It's perforated. You can fill that out and drop it in the drop box out here. There's also a QR code uh, if you'd rather do that than uh, use a pen or a pencil or whatever. Um, and we would just love to reach out to you and thank you for being here and, and get to know you. Uh, welcome to everybody that's watching online. We are so glad that you're spending your time with us. You're online and you can't see Dominique running around the edge, but we <laughs> that, that's what you miss by not being in, in the building. But it's so special that you guys are still spending time with us uh, from wherever you are. We're so glad that you're with us. Why don't we stand and pray together as a church before we begin to worship on Christmas Eve. Dear God, it is the fourth day of Sunday. It's the day before your son was miraculously born in, in humble ways in a manger, Father. We just pray today that as we sing and fellowship and rejoice that special day, that we would remember just truly what it means that you would send your son to be born for us today. Father, we love you and we pray that you would receive our praises to you. In your name we pray, amen. Angels we have heard on high Sweetly singing o'er the plains And the mountains in reply Echoing their joy streams
Right now, I'd love to invite up our youth, anybody that is part of our youth ministry, even if you're not part of the reading, you're not doing the reading or the candle lighting. If you're in a youth group, revolution, come up. Even if you're like, well, I don't go, but I am a youth, come on up. We want all our students to come forward, please, to bring us our candlelight reading. Looking for young at heart, Constable. No, only young in age. We light the first, second, third, and fourth Advent candles today. The candles of light, love, joy, and peace as we remember that our God is a God of peace. God is good and God brings peace in the midst of the chaos, busyness, and uncertainty of the world. Jesus, God's Son, was sent by God to be the Prince of Peace and to bring peace on earth to all people. As we light the candle of peace, we remember that Jesus brings peace on earth and Jesus is inviting us to be peacemakers as well. Please participate with us by saying, Jesus brings peace on earth after every line we say. When the world seems scary or uncertain. Jesus brings peace on earth. When things are not as they should be. Jesus brings peace on earth. When we make mistakes or other people mess up. 
when everything seems just right with the world. No matter what, all the time. We can be people of peace because today we light the candle of peace. Thank you so much, guys. At this point, we want to dismiss our kids to the back of the room to go with their teachers, and we want to take two minutes to greet each other, two whole Christmas spirit-filled minutes that begin right now. Well, Merry Christmas Eve morning to you. Uh, this morning, we will be celebrating Advent week four, and then tonight will be our Christmas Eve candlelight service. So this morning, we're, we're keeping it a little serious, but tonight is going to be like I don't know, chicken soup for the soul. Like tonight is, is kind of the fun, whimsical, all ages service. So, uh, so if you're available tonight, we'd love for you to come back um, for that. We'll, we'll do the whole candle thing. We're going to sing lots of carols and, um, and it's going to be a great time. The doors for that service are going to open at 5.30 with a cookie bar out in our main lobby here. Um, and if you ha don't eat gluten, like me, there will be cookies. Uh, if you cannot eat sugar, we will have some cookies for you as well. So we just want to give a, a warm welcome to each other tonight uh, with doing that. When we will have, yes, we will have normal cookies with sugar and all the bad, delicious stuff. You're right. I like when, that's so me. I went right to the healthy stuff. Uh, but no, it's Christmas. Enjoy, indulge. <laughs> well, after the past, uh, in, in these different Sundays, we have been celebrating Advent with, with uh, themes of light and love and joy. And today we are talking about peace. Now, peace is a word that can bring to mind a lot of different things. 
Uh, I'm, you know, feel free to tell me later what comes to your mind first when, when you think of the word peace. But for me, world peace is, the fir- is what comes to mind. Um, and, and, then, and then the next thing after that is people that work towards world peace. Um, and peace also for our country. So, right, our, our, our servicemen and women who are working towards peace in this country. And then globally, when I think of world peace, I think of the Nobel Peace Prize. And I have a really bad joke. Dave said I shouldn't tell it, but I'm going to tell it. <clears throat> See if I can say it right, because I was not going to say it, but I, the, it's just striking me, okay? Which Disney prince has the most peace? Gaston, because he has the Nobel Prize. Okay, more of you laughed than I thought would, because that's a very niche Beauty and the Beast joke, but anyway, uh, there are not a lot of good peace jokes out there. I tried to find one um, because peace is serious, right? Peace is a serious topic, especially world peace. So, okay, right, Nobel Peace Prize. It's given to people who contribute to increasing peace in the world in a, in a variety of different fields, and that's a great goal. World peace is an amazing dream and hope to have and goal to work towards. I think we would all like an absence of war and conflict, but, but also the abuses that lead to war. We would need that to, to not have war. Maybe when I said the word peace, the first thing that your brain went to was peace from conflict in a relationship. Maybe with a boss or a neighbor, or roommate, or family member. Maybe you thought of inner peace, freedom from anger um, that, that kind of explodes out rather than being healthy anger, or freedom from self-doubt, freedom from past burdens. Well, con- trying to come up with a definition that would encompass all of these different forms of peace, it seemed to me that At its simplest, peace is an absence of fear. And that's pretty biblical. There's dozens of times in scripture where God, Jesus, or an angel says fear not in the midst of a hard situation where God is going to bring things around in an amazing way, in a way that's going to increase peace eventually. In Luke 1, An angel comes to Zechariah and says this, Do not be afraid, Zechariah, or as it says in the King James Version, fear not. Your prayer has been heard. Your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son, and you are to call him John. He will be a joy and a delight to you, and many will rejoice because of his birth, for he will be great in the sight of the Lord. This baby would be John the Baptist, who would pave the way for people's hearts to be ready for Jesus. And uh, Zechariah's wife, who would bear this child, is Elizabeth. And Elizabeth is the one who was pregnant alongside Jesus' mother, Mary. So we have another fear not seen a little bit further down in Luke 1, starting at verse 26. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled by his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, do not be afraid, Mary. Fear not, Mary, for you have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. The angel goes on to tell Mary that Jesus will be great, the son of the Most High. He will sit on the throne of his ancestor, King David, and reign forever over God's people. Now, we know that that this baby would grow not to, to be the prince just for a generation 
or one area of the world, but he would grow to be the prince of peace forever and ever. Today, we are going to read a psalm that is attributed to Jesus' ancestor, David. Each week of this series, we've looked at a different psalm that ties to one of our keywords. And so today, we are going to be in Psalm 34. You are welcome to follow along in your Bible. Uh, if you would like, if you have one with you, or a pew Bible, the words will also be up on the screen. Uh, today, I'm going to be reading from the New Revised Standard Version, maybe a bit different than what you have but it tracks along pretty well. Now, Psalm 34. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall be continually in my mouth. My soul makes its boast in the Lord. Let the humble hear and be glad. O oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. We're going to pause there. These first three verses make clear that constant dependence on God is something that's good to be committed to. Now, while that's all like good and nice to think about constantly depending on God, what about when life is hard? Not normal hard, like hard, hard. You guys know what I mean when I say hard, hard, right? Not normal hard, like Oh my goodness, these things, sometimes there's just these things in life that are so brutal and impossible, and you're like, yeah, I depend on God. That sounds nice. It's written on paper. It's not that easy to do. Or maybe you don't struggle with that. Your faith is at a place where you're depending on God, but you're worried about somebody else. Are they going to be able to depend on God and, and stay true in their faith or, or find God maybe for the first time in the midst of what they're going through when it's so hard? Well, this psalm has a little surprise in it. If you are in a paper version, you may see right before it starts, there's a little, the fancy word here is superscription, and that means a little note before it starts. And it sets the context with a very bizarre phrasing here. It says that this psalm is praise for deliverance from the trouble of David, when he feigned madness before Abimelech so that he drove him out and went away. I do not know what is going on here, but that sounds like a scene of hard, hard. Because uh, Abimelech is not just one particular person. It's a, it's a generic name for Philistine kings in the Hebrew Bible. It means like father king. So it, it's, it's a title that comes up again and again and again. So here you have this powerful, cultural, military figure who's chasing him down, and his best solution is to feign madness. Pretend he's lost his mind. Now, we, this, this part, it may refer to, to 1 Samuel 21 in the Old Testament, but it may not. There's a couple of differences. So I don't know if this is a strategy that David used once or if this was a recurring strategy. But friends, either way, it means that life is hard, hard. David is not in a situation of peace in the context of this psalm. He's resorting to extreme measures. There's military conflict at his door. There's a psychological burden on him. There is not peace. So, what did David do? We pick up at verse 4. I sought the Lord, and he answered me and delivered me from all my fears. I just want to rest here for a minute. I sought the Lord, and he answered me and delivered me from all my fears. I mean, we could just wrap up then, right? That sounds like a, like a nice little formula for life, that you can seek the Lord, and God will free you from your fears. Um, I, I used to, some of you have heard me mention this before if you've been around here. I used to run a, a church service in a memory care unit of a, of a nursing home. And actually, I shared even earlier in this sermon series that when the old songs would get sung, the people would click. Their eyes, they would come alive. Their brains would start working. And there was one woman 
God bless her. I just, this woman was so dear to me. Uh, she had her memory issues began a very, much earlier in her life. So she was not elderly. Uh, so she was there for, for a very, very long time. And every time I came, we had to sing victory in Jesus. And if that was not on the plan that day, and we started to wrap up, she would just start singing victory in Jesus. There was no getting out of there without singing victory in Jesus. And as I read this verse this week, I was reminded of that. And so I know not everybody knows that song, but if you know it, would you just, let's just stop and sing it. I'm going to sing. Uh, <laughs> so join with me and sing loud. I think Terry's going to pop up the words for us. Oh, we're not popping up the words. Nope. Okay. But it goes, oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and he bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew him. And all my love is due him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. That was her song of peace. That was her song of peace. And it was about victory in Jesus. David didn't know that his grandbaby, 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 grandbaby was going to be Jesus. But we can read this psalm attributed to him and know where it's headed, that it's headed to victory in Jesus. Okay, now this psalm, Psalm 34, we're reading it in English, obviously, thank goodness, uh, for those of us who English is our first written language. Um, but of course, it was, it was originally recorded in Hebrew. And if you take this psalm and you look at it in Hebrew, it is an acrostic poem. You know, for us, we would say like A. Actually, if you come tonight, we're going to do a little ABCs of Christmas. So it'd be like tonight. A, angel, B, blah, 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 C, blah, blah. So this is written as an acrostic poem. So there's definitely creative license that is happening in the midst of this retelling of this scene of David. But I kind of love that line. I love that line. I sought the Lord and he answered me and delivered me from all my fears. I, I feel like this could be a, a formula. In fact, later on, when we wrap up, we're going to like kind of pop it up there as a little line to try to remember. But, but here's the thing, okay? He sought the Lord, and the Lord delivered him. But I, I want to make something clear. Uh, God is not like a soda machine, right? We can't go and put our prayers in whoop, and expect, clunk, uh, just what we want to, to pop out. That, that's, not, that's not how our faith works works. So sometimes if, if we haven't prayed for a long time and then we do it, and we're like, but God, I came back to you and I started praying to you again. Give me what I want. Your, your, your prayer may be very, very valid and good and worthwhile, but, but God is not a soda machine. We, we can't just put in what we want and expect victory in the way we want it to come out. But God is faithful and does love us and does hear us. And so seeking God through prayer, which is talking to God and, and listening back, seeking God through silence, seeking God through scripture, seeking God through wise others, those all can increase our peace. Those all can grow our relationship with God. And so maybe the right flavor doesn't pop out of the machine, but we're building a relationship with the one who grants us peace. Okay, verse 5. Look to him, God. Look to God and be radiant, so your face shall never be ashamed. This poor soul cried and was heard by the Lord and was saved from every trouble. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him and delivers them. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Happy are those who take refuge in him. In this psalm, first we hear of David's personal experience, and then we're challenged not just to take his word for it, but to experience it for ourselves. Oh, taste 
and see. This is the phrasing of personal experience. Verse 9. Oh, fear the Lord, you his holy ones. For those who fear him have no want. The young lions suffer want and hunger, but those who seek the Lord lack no good thing. Come, O oh children, listen to me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. Now, if you've been around here for long, you've heard me say before that the word fear here really means respect. It's a, it's a tricky word to translate, but it's, it's not about domination and being terrified. It's about respect. Respect the Lord, you holy ones. Those who respect the Lord are satisfied. So come listen to, to the story, David's story, our story about the good results of respecting God through hard times. And then this psalm goes back to something, again, that sounds like a tidy little formula for good life. Verse 12. Which of you desires life and covets many days to enjoy good? Keep your tongue from evil and your lips from speaking deceit. Depart from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. Flee from evil, do good, seek peace, chase after it. So how do we apply this kind of peace to our lives? Well, when it comes to peace and the sense of peace in the world and peace with others, Psalm, this psalm's formula of seek the Lord, flee from evil, do good, chase peace, it, it works at a basic underlying level when it comes to peace in the world and peace others, peace with others. Now, I, I know the logistics of that aren't quite so simple, but it's a solid foundation. But what about peace with ourselves? Peace with God. Seek the Lord. Flee from evil. Do good. Chase peace. It works there as well. And our opportunity to do this often comes in those moments where we have fear that makes peace seem impossible. The medical diagnosis is so huge. The job before you is so hard. The financial need is so great. You're the only person who's standing up for what's right, where the issue is just so complicated. But in that, God invites us to fear not, just like Zechariah and Mary were invited to fear not. Nazarene theologian Dan Boone, uh, writer of the book Joy of Every Longing Heart, which has inspired this sermon series, brings us back to Mary in that moment where the angel tells her to fear not. This is what he writes. He gets a little flowery here, and I love it. Mary is an adolescent girl. She probably wears hand-me-down clothes that aren't expensive. She can't read because girls of her day rarely did. Her parents make all the decisions that affect her life, including the one that she should marry an older man named Joseph. We don't know if she even liked him. She lives in a two-bit town without a McDonald's or a stoplight. And into her bedroom comes a brightly beaming divine messenger. Holy wattage against candlelit room. Divine might and glory against human frailty. Mary is fragile probably overwhelmed, definitely vulnerable. She has had overwhelming stuff happen to her. She's faced life with little power to make it turn out the way that she wants. Forces beyond her have rearranged her life. She's the, the matron saint of the vulnerable. So if you ever think your own story is not in the Bible, look closely at Mary because she is vulnerable just like 
us. I'm going to read a little bit more from Dr. Boone, but, but while I do, I want to, I want to put up this, this artwork uh, that was released this year um, by the artist Kelly Lattimore. I think we have it. Um, wonderful. This is called Jesus in the Rubble. So uh, Kelly Lattimore is just an exquisite artist, and he makes a, kind of an edgy, thought-provoking uh, Christmas piece of art every year. And this one is Jesus in the Rubble to remind us that as we are thinking of the places of the very first Christmas, um, that those places are not experiencing peace today, that there is chaos there. And it illustrates the prophetic message that if Jesus was born today, he would be born under the rubble. So as we kind of just drink in, taste and see that the Lord is good, but also taste and see the the complicated reality of our world depicted in this piece of artwork, I'm going to bring us back to the words of Dr. Boone. If you ever think your own story is not in the Bible, look closely at Mary. She is vulnerable just like us. But Mary may not be the most vulnerable one in the story. There's one who becomes even more vulnerable than she. The God becomes dependent flesh in Mary's vulnerable womb. Christ's birth story may seem to magnify Mary, but it's really about God and the vulnerability of God. God, the creator, becomes creature. God, the breath of every little thing, becomes embryo. God, whose hands scoop out the ocean, floats in a fetal sack. God, whose voice splits cedar trees, cries for mother's milk. God, who crushes king's armies, can't walk. God, who feeds all living things, is hungry, became vulnerable. Told you he gets a little flowery, but I love it. He continues on. I forget that sometimes. I prefer Gabriel, frightening, powerful, mighty messenger of God. When I am vulnerable, I want to behold a delivering, transforming, world-altering, situation changing me, putting me back in control, God. I ask God to meet me at the intersection of fixed and finished. But God has chosen to meet us in the vulnerable Christ, revealing himself at the point of our own vulnerability. Dare you meet the mighty God at the point of your vulnerability. He's here. Right here, right now, our God has come to you on this Christmas Eve day where meek souls will receive him still, the dear Christ enters in. So my prayer for you, I woke up this morning, 6.30, that's a little early for me, but my body was ready, and I woke up with a prayer for you. Whether you're here with us today, you're watching online, you're watching later on recording. My prayer for you around peace is that you find peace with God. Because if you do that, I believe the rest will follow. Now, when you find peace with God, doesn't mean that every question is answered. Doesn't mean that you get it all, agree with it all. No, peace with God can be as small as a mustard seed because eventually mustard seeds grow into massive, massive plants. But peace with God starts with a saving knowledge of Jesus. That this baby whose birth we celebrate today didn't stay a baby, but he grew up to be a person who's lived through what we all experience, friendship, family, betrayal, grief, but never once in the midst of that sinned. And then ultimately gave up his life, died on the cross to take on the penalty of death for the sin of all people. For people back then, for people who lived before him, even for the sins of his ancestor, David, for people today, like me, 
and you. And it is because of Jesus that we can have peace with God and that we can have a relationship with God that is holy and pure and a direct connection to our mighty God. And when you have peace with God, I believe that it increases the peace that we can have with ourselves. Because the God who formed you in your mother's womb knows how many hairs are on your head. That might be zero. Might be a lot. Might be somewhere in the middle, but God knows that. And when you know that you are made in the image of God, it can increase the peace that you have living in your own body, in your own skin, with your own story. Doesn't mean we're going to have peace with all the choices we make. That's the power of conviction. That's the journey of moving towards sanctification, increasing our holiness. But you can know that God has seen the depths of your heart and loves you the same. Jesus' mother Mary was in the midst of her life, turning upside down in that scene in her room. But her peace with God made that shock bearable. In the midst of her vulnerability, her peace with God helped her find a way forward to see that her life was going to point to a higher purpose than she ever could have imagined. And when we have peace with ourselves, we can move into that as well and see where our, our brokenness, our sin has put us or has been, but how it moves us into how God has a higher purpose for us. When you have greater peace, you have peace with God, peace within yourself, that can move you to having greater peace in the midst of conflict. Now, following Jesus does not make all your problems go away. Anybody who's been a Christian for a long time, right, you know that. It's not the soda machine experience, right? Whoop, chunk, perfect life. No, this is not how it works. Following Jesus doesn't control the behavior of people around you. There's still going to be conflict. But following Jesus can change a lot in your life and can change you in the midst of the things you cannot control and increase your peace in the midst of conflict. Jesus' ancestor David was in the midst of chaos and danger with Abimelech, but God granted him the peace to get through it. And finally, finding peace with God will help you to see world peace someday. I mentioned Jesus dying on the cross a, a few moments ago, but the story doesn't end there. Jesus' body was placed in the tomb, and it stayed there for three days while his friends, while Mary, were heartbroken. But on the third day, he rose again. He beat death. And he stayed with his friends and his followers for 40 more days before he returned to heaven. Where he will stay until the time comes for his return. That, that time that no one knows. Not even the son, but only the father. But when he comes, he will make all things new. Now, I don't know if we're going to see world peace before that. Or if when Jesus comes eventually peace gets ushered in. But I know that everybody who follows Jesus in this life will also follow him in the afterlife, which means we get to see that glorious victory of eternal peace. We're going to wrap our service up with a couple of things today. One, I, I'm going to leave you with two scriptures on peace. Two, uh, we're going to have an opportunity to take communion together and then after that, Pastor Luke and our wonderful worship band will lead us in a, in a few more songs to worship the Lord. John 14, 27 says, peace I leave with you. This is Jesus talking. Peace I leave with you. 
My peace I give to you, not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled, nor let it be fearful. In 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 through 24, may the God of peace himself sanctify you entirely, and may your spirit and soul and body be kept sound and blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful, and he will do this. Seek the Lord. Flee from evil. Do good and chase peace, and you will find peace with God, peace within yourself, Increased peace in the midst of conflict and the ability to see world peace someday. Let's pray. Uh, Thank you, God, that you are with us. Thank you for the gift of Jesus, the Prince of Peace, and for the promise that Jesus will come again. Thank you for sending your spirit to be with us as we wait in the messy middle Earlier today, we lit the candle of peace. May it be a reminder today and in the year to come that Jesus brings peace and we are called to partner with him as courageous peacemakers. God, we also come today with a variety of spiritual backgrounds, Background in knowing you or following you. Backgrounds in understanding, celebrating what Christmas is or or not. I, I know, Lord, that there is not just one way of being in this room. And I am so grateful for that. I'm so grateful for the diversity in our family of faith here. But God, I just pray. I pray. That first thing we talked about as as the number one path to peace, peace, which is peace with God. Lord, I I just pray, I want to stop here and come before you, God, that each one of us needs peace with you, but we may be at different points on the journey, God. And so I pray, Lord, if if there is someone who, who has never said yes to following you, who's never said yes to peace with God through Jesus, that today would be the day. That that is as simple as coming before you and saying, I believe that Jesus is this bridge to God and peace through what he has done on the cross. That he paid the penalty for my sins so that I could have everlasting life. And that in my life here and now, that there is a path for me to live with increasing holiness. That's all it takes to take that first step of peace with God. God, for others of us, we know that you are in your your family. But we might not be at peace with you right now our hurts, our questions, our doubts get in the way. The ways that that some of our brothers and sisters in Christ have acted make us really question. Maybe the way that that even the the church, this church or, or another church, God has hurt us means we don't have peace in our relationship with you. But God, we come before you and we ask, we ask that you would take faith even as small as a mustard seed and increase that. And God, some of us, our our faith is strong, but we know we're, we're doing some things that aren't helping us walk in full unity and peace with you. that we choose sin, we choose our own way, God. Could be something that's one of those the world counts as a big bad sin, but God, that's not the end of it. 
Sometimes it's things like not keeping the Sabbath day holy or choosing our way instead of your way with our time or our talent, our treasure, God. And so we come before you with a moment to confess these burdens that are weighing on us, Lord. In this moment of silence other than just music, hear our confessions, Lord. Lord, as we move into a time of communion, we ask that you make this today a celebration of our peace with Christ, a celebration of our joy, a celebration of your love that we have the opportunity to pour out into others, God. Help us through partaking in the bread and the cup to taste and see that the Lord is good. In your name we pray, amen. Well, we're going to move into a time of communion. Uh, Pastor Luke and I are going to be up front here. And uh, we've got to go through a little bit of logistics on this. But uh, we have an open table here. Anyone who has accepted Jesus as, as your Savior and Lord may participate regardless of your background or if you're a member or not. It's, it's, if, if you're in Team Jesus, you are invited to the table. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll have you come up through these side aisles here so that people on both sides can get in line and, and come up. And then you'll take the elements and go back uh, through the middle to your seats and hold on to those elements until everyone has been served. Uh, if you would like us to bring the elements to you, as things wrap up, just uh, raise your hand and we will bring it to those people that would like to be served from their seats. If you are not participating in communion today, we want this to still be a, a comfortable environment for you. So there's two things you can do. One is you can stay in your seat and let others pass you by, or you can come up and when you get here, you can just you know keep your hands in or give a little shake of the head. Uh, and we welcome you wherever you are on your spiritual journey. Once everyone is served, we're gonna say the Lord's Prayer together. The words will be up on the screen, and then I'll walk us through the words of consecration, and we'll partake in those elements together. So uh, I'm going to ask Pastor Luke to come to this side. Also, if you need gluten-free communion, just let us know. We have that available as well. So would you, as you feel the call of the Lord to participate, come and gather.
The Lord himself ordained this holy sacrament. He commanded his disciples to partake of the bread in the cup, emblems of his broken body and shed blood. This is his table. The feast is for his disciples. Let all those who have with true repentance forsaken their sins and have believed in Christ unto salvation draw near and take these emblems and by faith partake in the life of Jesus Christ to your soul's comfort and joy. Let us remember that it is the memorial of the death and passion of our Lord and also a token of his coming again. Let us not forget that we are one at one table with the Lord. We're reminded that in the same night that our Lord was betrayed, he took the bread and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, this is my body given in remembrance for you. Do this. Do this in remembrance of me. Take this and eat in remembrance that Christ died for you and may it preserve you blameless unto everlasting life. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you. Do this and whenever you drink it, do it in remembrance of me. Drink this in remembrance that Christ's blood was shed for you and be thankful and may it preserve you blameless into everlasting life. Holy Lord, we come today at your table, not my table, not the table of Woodbridge Naz not the table of the Church of the Nazarene or, or just the Christian church, but God, your table, this is your feast. Help us to taste and see that the Lord is good. Increase our peace in you, Lord, and in your ways. God, we ask that as we move into a time of singing that that our words would be a sweet, sweet sound to your ears. You would hear our worship, Lord, that, that even by the ask, act of congregational singing, singing together, that we would feel greater unity together in your name, Lord, so that together we can be better, that we can be your agents of peace and joy and love and hope in the name of Christ. And also, God, as some will bring offerings today, either to the, the black box in the lobby or online, God, or, or mailing it in. We just ask that you take what is given and we consecrate it to you for your holy purposes, God. Help us to serve you with all that we have and to do it well and to do it in peace, a peace that passes all understanding, a, a peace that shows this world what Christ has to offer that the world doesn't, God. Help us to be your light. In your name we pray. Stand as you're able. Christ is my firm foundation, the rock on which I stand when everything around me is shaken. I've never been more glad that I put my faith in Jesus. As he Never let me down He's faithful through change 
child is born. He shall reign forevermore. No. to say if today you made a decision to move in peace toward God, increase your peace in God, we want to know, we want to walk with you through the desire of your heart to know God more. And so you can, you can let us know by just personally telling Pastor Luke or I or uh, in our connection card in the, in the bulletin, you can drop a little note there. Um, or you can just reach out another way. But just know that, that we love you and we want to walk the journey of peace with God with you. I'm going to turn it over to Pastor Luke, who's going to give us our announcements. Thank you. Uh, so tonight we have our cookies, carols, and candles Christmas Eve candlelight service. It's going to be so wonderful. We really hope that you guys will all come back tonight. Uh, and be a part of that service with us. Uh, and it's just going to be uh, just a warm time of, of Christmas and getting ready for tomorrow. Um, and then, so, 6 p.m., I apologize. Yeah, 6 p.m., um, doors open at 5.30 for cookie eating. Because we need, we really need a whole 30-minute chunk of time to eat cookies, right? Luke, Luke, will we sing Noel with Joel? Probably not. Okay, sorry. Um, so that's, that's tonight, 6 p.m., doors open at 5.30 for cookie consumption. Um, so we'd love to see you guys here. Uh, the office hours are, well, we're closed on Christmas Day. But from the 26th through the 30th, we are open by appointment only. So if you really need us, reach out to us. Uh, and then next Sunday, New Year's Eve, we are going to have our Christmas unplugged service. So if you guys have gifts of music or testimony or art or poetry or whatever you guys have, uh, there's a sign-up sheet out here. Please sign up for anything you guys want to maybe bring. We have some 
Great sign-ups already. And uh, word on the street is you can wear your PJs next Sunday. So if you roll out of bed, you're like, oh, no, I didn't wake up. I didn't set my alarm. Just roll out of bed and come. Like, we won't, we won't judge your hair and your clothes will match everybody else. So that's next week, normal uh, 11 a.m. service. January 6th at 8.30 a.m., editorial note to the bulletin. Uh, men's breakfast is not at Bob Evans. It is at the World of Waffles and Omelets. Um, so they have both things there. World of Waffles and Omelets, 8.30 a.m. for men's breakfast. Um, then January 12th through the 14th, we have our youth, our Nazarene Youth International Winter Retreat at Harrisonburg. We have a few people who have already signed up for that. If you need more information, please come see me or email us, and I can get you that information. It's a great time of fellowship and music and fun. Um, so if you want to go to that, if you're a youth and you want to go to that, please come see me. Uh, and then January 20th, the Women's Breakfast, another editorial note. It is not at the IHOP on Holy Road like it normally is. It is at the IHOP on Galveston Court in Manassas. It's the same place? Why would you guys do that to me? You guys know that I read whatever's on, whatever's on the bulletin. Why would you do that to me? You made me look a fool on Christmas Eve. So if you don't want to look a fool, come to the women's breakfast, if you are a woman, uh, and enjoy a great January, the first women's breakfast of the month. You guys could have just kept that to yourselves and, like, talked that amongst each other afterwards. Yeah, it's the same place. Don't worry. He doesn't know what he's talking about. So as always, if you miss any of these announcements amid my tomfoolery, you can go online at woodbridgenaz.com slash events and get caught up on everything that you need to get caught up there. And if you need to RSVP, there is always a sign up in the lobby or woodbridgenaz.com slash RSVP. So without any further ado, I'm going to turn it over to someone who knows what they're about to say. And <laughs> Don Robbins, our youth director for Benediction. Thank you, Luke. You are the tomfoolery. Okay, first off, please rise for the benediction. And before I read the benediction to you, I have to just put a pitch in for next Sunday. Um, for those of you who don't know, today is the anniversary of the worst day of my life and the best day of my life. If you want to hear the rest of the story, come see us next Sunday. Tonight, we are celebrating something very special. It comes out of Luke chapter 2. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place where Quirinius was governor of Syria. And everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem the town of David, because he belonged to the house of the line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born. And she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in clothes and placed him in a manger, because there was no guest room available to them. Remember this beautiful day. Celebrate tomorrow the birth of our Lord and Savior. So go out today and shine from your heart the very gift that Jesus Christ gave to us, to others, so that they may too find the love the hope, the joy, and as Pastor Pam talked about today, the peace that comes from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. God bless you. Have a wonderful day, and have a very, very awesome and Merry Christmas.